Hey everyone, what's up? A few weeks ago I received an email from the Behanza team asking if I could do a review of their film emulation plugin, Behanza Pro. I've been able to test it as well as their iOS app, so I give you my honest opinion about it. Behanza is a film emulation plugin for software like Final Cut, Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, and it basically allows you to recreate the look of actual film with your digital footage. It includes features like halation, film grain or bloom, and you can choose from a variety of film profiles, which comes very handy if you want to recreate the look of a specific scene or movie. So here is what the plugin looks like. When you apply it, you directly have some settings applied. For instance, here we have film with a Kodak Vision 3 profile. We have expand and film grain as well. You have all these categories, input, film, film developer, etc. And I love that this is organized as drop down menus like this, as it makes each step of the process very clear. In each category, you have these boxes that you can check to enable or disable each feature. So, for example, this is with and without film. If you look at the very top, you have input, so it basically allows you to do a color space transform. So, I already have one here from the Vinci Resolve, but I've tested it um, with my camera. So you can choose a camera, it's a Canon R6 Mark II here and it was shot in C-Log3 Cinema Gamut uh, So here it looks absolutely terrible because I already have my color space transform So here is what it looks like But I found that there is a slight variation between the color space transform of the Vinci Resolve and the one of the Hansa I don't really know why there is a difference but still something to keep in mind in film profile you have all these different film stocks that you can choose to achieve different looks so for instance Kodak Vision 3 or Kodak, Kodak Chrome so you have a really wide variety of possibilities here so let's test different ones on this shot so I kind of like the look of the Kodak Supra 100 this is without and with and it has kind of this muted tones that I really like in Film Developer, you have different options like Contrast Boost, let's enable it. Well, I'm not going to use it here, or maybe just a tiny bit. Color Separation, Color Boost, it's a bit like Saturation. So let's bring it up just a bit. You have Print options as well, so you have Linear, Cinema Film Log, Codec. Two different codecs, actually. So I'm just leaving it to Linear here. And so one of the most important parts of the film look is film grain. So you have all these different possibilities here. So by default, it's on this 35 millimeters ISO 250. I'm maybe going to try 65 millimeters ISO 50. But if I play the shot here, well, it's maybe too subtle. I can always increase the amount. Well, maybe it's a bit too much here. Let's decrease the amount. Yeah, better. Then you also have halation, so you can enable, disable it. And the very cool feature is you have mask mode, so you can directly see which parts are affected and increase or decrease the amount. Here we don't have a lot of halation going on, but if I put maybe this 8mm no rim jet, you can see there's a lot here. Well, I think it's maybe a bit too much. So let's put the um, 35 mm mirrors uh, like it is by default. We can always amplify it a bit. Well, that's subtle, but I like it this way. So let's keep it like this. Uh, I have bloom, so same by default, 35 mm mirrors. So let's enable it. And same thing here, you have the mask mode. Here you have different possibilities as well. So 8 mm mirrors, uh, 65, a bit more subtle. You can always amplify it. I think it looks great like this. So you can also add some film damage. I don't really like it, but well, if you want to go really deep into the film look again, you can also use film breath or gateway, but well, I'm not really into this because it's a bit too much for me. But if you really want to recreate an old film look, I think this is the way to go. These options are really good just not what I really like for this kind of shot. Another thing that is really good in my opinion is the overscan. You have this little overlay here that is customizable and it's really handy. You can choose maybe Ultra 16mm, Super 8. Very cool feature, not going to use it for this shot but you can really customize it however you want the exposure here, the scale, uh, gate defocus. 
It's a really, really good feature and I highly recommend you to use it if you get the answer. We also have the vignette here. You can change the exposure. Well, it's a vignette. Um, so it's great to have this feature as well in there. So this is with and without the answer. So you can see here that this is a regular digital shot. And then if I activate the answer, you have this kind of film look with a subtle grain. I might just put another grain, just made it too subtle, like the 35 millimeters. So what's really cool about Dehancer Pro is that you can get a really cool result in no time. I think you can use Dehancer in several ways. You can use it to do your full color grading just with the plugin, using the input here, then choosing a film stock, choosing your film grain, etc. And you can get very creative just with the plugin. But personally, I prefer to use another workflow. What I do is do my adjustments and then apply my own look. Just after that, apply the film look with the Hanser. So I already get what I want and the Hanser is the cherry on top for the film look. Let me show you what I did on another clip. So this is with and without the Hanser. Here I have a few adjustments, a lot here applied and then the Hanser. I use the Kodak Vision 350D as a film profile. I have film compression enabled. If I disable it, you can see the whites are really white. Um, I prefer them a bit muted like this. I also have expand enabled. You can see if I disable it, the contrast is really low. I just played a bit with black and white points. For film grain, I used 65 millimeters ISO 500, halation 65 millimeters as well, and bloom as well. And then I think everything is disabled here. I think it really adds a lot to the clip and I really like it this way. For the other clips, this is pretty much the same thing actually, except that here I don't have any film profile enabled. I just used the film grain and bloom. So there is also an iOS app where you can find all these features as well and edit directly from your iPhone or iPad. I've tested it on a few clips shot on my iPhone 12 mini and I found that it worked really well. The interface is very intuitive and you can get satisfying results in no time. However, it did crash a few times as I tried to export a clip at maximum resolution, but I guess this will be fixed in a future update. And the nice thing is that it saves the last edit, so even if it crashes, you don't have to go through all the process again. So is the Hansa worth it? Well, in my opinion, the plugin is absolutely fantastic. You can get a great film look in just a few clicks and the result is far superior to what you can get with other plugins. In terms of performance, as you can see, it works really well on my M1 Max MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of RAM. I found that it works smoothly even with film grain and halation turned on. However, once you add bloom, kinds of get choppy. And the same goes for grain and bloom or halation and bloom. With two, it works perfectly, but with three, it kind of starts lagging. So what I suggest is turn off one of them and only activate it once you are ready to export. So overall, it looks great. However, we have to talk about the price. The Vinci Resolve Studio costs 295 US dollars, whereas the Hansa's Lifetime Pro version costs 449 dollars. Quite a difference. Well, actually you can get it for 404 dollars by using the code BENOWA at checkout. But to be completely honest, I think the plugin would be worth it for DaVinci users if it cost $250 less. I mean, you have almost all the features of Dehanza built in DaVinci Resolve Studio with sometimes even more control. So I don't really see the point of buying the plugin with it being more expensive than the software itself. However, for Final Cut Pro users, it will still be an excellent update to the software, so might be worth considering. As for the iOS app, I've got mixed feelings. Where you're on the go and you want to post a really cool Instagram story and you don't want to take out your laptop, you can just go in the app, apply a preset and hit export. Really quick, great result. There's still the problem of the price though. It comes at $89.9 for a year with unlimited exports. Still expensive, but we've seen other apps in the same price range. I personally wouldn't pay this much for an app. I might consider it if the lifetime version was at this price, but I think right now it's still a bit overpriced. So the choice is yours. I'd suggest getting the two weeks free trial to try for yourself and see if you would actually use it. If you don't want to get too deep into color grading and the price isn't the problem for you, then sure, go ahead. 
The Hansa is a fantastic plugin and I'm sure you won't be disappointed. If you're more on a budget, I think using DaVinci Resolve Studio's features might be a better solution. Thank you for watching this review. If you do plan on getting the Hansa, you can use the code BENOWA at checkout to get 10% off and it would greatly help the channel. If you want a more in-depth review of the Hansa or have any further questions, please let me know in the comments. That's it for this video. If you enjoy my work, make sure to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.